Um, yeah. What about inference and the com competition there? I know it's way early, but just give our viewers a sense as to how you see it, who the dominant providers are, and how that could change over time, and whether Qualcomm has a market share to gain here. Yeah, well, look, I, I mean, so inference should be more fragmented than, than training. Training really is, is NVIDIA. That, that's kind of where it is. Um, most of the other players that have really been trying to push and have been trying to push into inference because you can you can make the argument that some of the workloads may be more specialized, they may be more, you know, uh, power and everything else may be more important, and so there may be more room. Inference probably long-term is also the bigger TAM, and at least it, it better be, right? Because if you're looking for usage and adoption, that's where it's going to be. And, and so I think there's a point of view that there's more room for more players to exist in inference versus training that really you know, has been owned by NVIDIA. And, and again, if the markets are as big as, as, as people think they are, it doesn't take a lot. Again, it's a small, by the, this has been the bull case for a number of these guys, like a very small slice of a very big pie could be big enough. Um, why, why shouldn't Qualcomm be a beneficiary of a, of a, of a thesis like that as well? I mean, yeah, we'll have some of these private chip companies as well. We've had a few of them on. I mean, some of it could be somewhat unproven, but what does it all mean for NVIDIA as we move? I mean, I know models will still be trained, but ultimately, to the extent that inference is going to be more competitive, is it a threat to NVIDIA's lock on the market? Yeah. So, look, I think NVIDIA does and will do just fine in inference as well. And it's it's the same thing. You know, like People make these same kind of arguments between, like, for example, like GPUs and ASICs and which one's winning or losing. And I still think we're too early for that. I, I think the right question today is is not which one's winning or losing. or it's Is the opportunity still big or is it not? I mean, if it's still big, the pie's getting bigger. There's enough room for, for lots of folks to benefit. If, if the opportunity is not big, everybody's screwed. <laughs> right? So that, that's that's the question that you need to have confidence. I, I still think the opportunity is still big. I think we're still very early here. Does it change the, the pricing dynamics, though? If there are more entrants into this space and more competition, does it drive down prices? I mean, to your point, NVIDIA moved down a little bit, but it's still up 1.5% today. So yeah. clearly, investors don't see it as this existential threat to NVIDIA, but I'm just curious over the long term what it means for just their margins for this type of chip. Well, again, for NVIDIA, I think the big question is not so much, you know, what are they charging? It, it's can they continue to improve the performance? So, they, you know, their, their pricing is going up with every generation because their costs are going up with every generation, but they're improving performance much more. And just, just, just for an example, you, know, you went from Ampere to Hopper. The pricing basically doubled. Performance went up 10x, like no problem. You went from, from Hopper to Blackwell, the pricing went up, I don't know, 50%-ish, give or take. Performance went up anywhere from 3 to 30x. Again, no, no problem. You can pass that along. The total cost of ownership, the TCO to the customer, is getting better and better with every generation. As long as NVIDIA can keep improving performance at those kind of rates, I don't really worry about their margins. And I, by the way, they're aware of this, too. Like they, They've talked about this in the past. They want to improve GPU performance by a million X over the next like 10 years. If they can do that, I don't worry too much about the margins. If they can't, then, then, I would, then I would start to worry, but that's what I'd be watching for. On the name, Ed, it, it says what it is on the label. It's an AI chip. Right, Just 200. How, 200, apparently. Just how big of a rivalry will this pose to NVIDIA? Yeah, I mean, the stock reaction, a gain of almost 9%. Biggest jump since early April. The stock's now trading at, at its highest level since July of last year. Is shows that this is real. Um, the AI 200 is an MPU, a neural processing unit. It's just a fancy way of saying it's a purpose-designed accelerator card for AI machine learning tasks. And what Qualcomm is saying is that it ships next year, 2026. The first customer is Humane the Saudi Arabian AI startup. It's basically a holding or umbrella company for the nation's data center build out. And they're committing to 200 megawatts, which is modest in the scheme of, of everything that's going on. But now as we approach a 10% gain, you know, the market is, is, uh, is there for Qualcomm to participate in. It's one that they've not been in so far. Um, so it's a very interesting reaction here. Ed, you have, as the co-host of Bloomberg Tech and a journalist who just breaks news on a regular basis, a better view sure. than most at um, the race to beat NVIDIA in terms of yeah. building chips. Um, we've heard about other competitors before, but how close is anyone coming and uh, how worried should Jensen Wong be? Well, again, the reaction in Qualcomm shares shows that the market is taking this product seriously. Um, but it is a small and early entry into a market in which NVIDIA holds a monopoly. The issue is that, that if you take Qualcomm as a case study, it's a future product. 
2026 is next year. And the, the way that NVIDIA has been able to hold a lead out over AMD and Qualcomm now entering that market and other specialist silicon names like Grok, Grok with a Q, is that it basically has told the market its plans for the next five years. So we already know what the next generation GPU from NVIDIA is and when it's going to come. And so if you are planning data center capacity and doing deals all over the planet, you know, we already know that NVIDIA has you know, future deals in 2026 at the same time that Qualcomm's made this announcement with Humane. And that's the difficulty that these new entrants in the market are dealing with. Then it will become, what is the performance of this accelerator card? Is it better at certain tasks uh, in, in the inference uh, context than NVIDIA's gear? We just don't know because it's not yet deployed. When it was announced that Qualcomm would be entering the AI chip race and competing against industry titans like advanced micro devices and NVIDIA, the shares of the underappreciated semiconductor company shot up more than 11% in a single session on Monday. Given that there are probably still plenty of economic gains to be made by AI chip manufacturers outside of the top two, I consider Qualcomm's most recent change to be a huge victory, even if it doesn't catch up to the top two leaders in the AI accelerator market. In my opinion, the most recent development at Qualcomm is significant enough to justify the euphoria surrounding the double-digit percentage surge in QCOM stock especially when combined with the circular agreements we've seen in the AI scene. In a previous video, I criticized Qualcomm, a lesser appreciated semiconductor company whose AI chip efforts should help fuel a comeback in shares, before a 6G connectivity boom, likely in a few years, had a chance to work its way into the bottom line. If there is one company that can execute as it enters the AI chip race, it is without a doubt Qualcomm. The key question is how and by how much experts will alter their opinions on Qualcomm now that it has punched its ticket to the race. Naturally, a lot of analysts appear to believe that the most recent surge in shares is well-deserved. Even though it's too early to say if Qualcomm's product will be able to grab market share away from companies like NVIDIA or AMD, I do believe that the most recent upswing in the name is more than viable. However, only time will tell how much dollars Wall Street adds to its QCOM stock price projections. Given the potential upside if Qualcomm can build an AI processor that keeps NVIDIA on its toes, I still don't think the company is worth less than 20 times trailing price to earnings, PE. Qualcomm's AI200 series of chips have the potential to be a huge share mover, even if they are unable to directly compete with NVIDIA. You don't have to be in the top spot to benefit from the spike in demand for AI chips, as we discovered with AMD another stock that I've hailed in recent months as a fantastic catch-up play. The current surge in Qualcomm's AI chips might be the beginning. In any event, Qualcomm's stock has been rising steadily for a while, and since shares are still down slightly more than 17% from their peak, I do believe that more investors may be switching from the more frothy AI firms to honest that are still reasonably priced. It's difficult to argue that AI stocks are in a bubble when a company like QCOM is trading at 13.9 times forward P.E. As Qualcomm seeks to unveil the AI200 chip in 2026 and the AI250 in 2027, I'm a huge admirer of the company's foray into AI chips and believe it will succeed. I consider the move to be not very surprising, even though I believe the 11% one-day increase is fair. Qualcomm needs to step up and start investing in projects like the AI200 series if it wants to take part in this AI explosion more fully. In addition to the 6G revolution, which may start to take hold before 2030, I believe Qualcomm is one of the next major players in AI to experience significant multiple expansion since, with a forward PE in the teens, I believe the market is undervaluing the company. The bottom line. I believe that an upward course correction has already started following Monday's move. As experts and investors note the AI250's release date for next year, it will be interesting to observe how steep Qualcomm's surge will be. The AI250 could very well deliver on the generational leap in efficiency that the company has promised. Considering Qualcomm's expertise in power-efficient semi-design, I believe it would be a mistake to undervalue the company's foray into AI-driven semiconductors. To put it mildly, it's an expensive and ambitious endeavor, but if the company wants to remake itself and raise the multiple on its shares once more, it must make this effort. As the next stage of the boom unfolds, Efficiency gains could be the direction that the AI chip industry takes next. And I think Qualcomm is in a great position in that sense. Therefore, QCOM stock looks too wonderful to ignore, regardless of whether you're searching for an AI catch-up play or a name that resists the AI bubble headlines. 
The dress code for NVIDIA's inaugural Washington GTC will favor more hill badges over hoodies. The corporation is hosting the subdued follow-up to Silicon Valley's most popular export, Persuasive, with over 70 sessions covering topics including as responsible AI, quantum computing, digital infrastructure, and more. The annual GPU Technology Conference, a glitzy pageant of chips, demos, and developer bravado, has long been a Silicon Valley tradition. Every March, CEO Jensen Huang fills arenas in San Jose, California, with engineers excited to see what's next. His leather jacket has become as iconic as his chip diagrams. However, the coders are replaced by contractors for this week's three-day summit, October 27-29, at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center. The company's goals will probably be revealed by the move to Washington just as much as by the timing of it. AI infrastructure is rapidly turning into a statecraft issue, the type of national interest endeavor that calls for equal amounts of regulation, funding, and supervision. The agenda has a track titled Government Affairs. NVIDIA is presenting itself as the supplier that can realize Washington's digital aspirations without rebuilding its bureaucracy as federal AI guidelines continue to take shape. NVIDIA is after a market that rarely switches vendors and makes large purchases. Check-ins, workshops, and campus activations were the conference's more subdued on-ramp on Monday, but it sets the tone for an event that is as much for consumers as it is for builders. With Huang's keynote speech on Tuesday, the event really gets started. He will take the stage at 12 p.m. ET, but not before an extended warm-up and a live stream for those who can't scan their badges. It is anticipated that Huang's keynote address would serve as a civics lesson, reminding everyone that, Influence is just as important as innovation in an era of export restrictions, tariffs, and trillion-dollar computing budgets. The CEO of NVIDIA is probably going to highlight AI factories, safe supply chains, and power efficiency, talking themes that are easily translated into Washington jargon for infrastructure, jobs, and national competitiveness. Expect references to quantum HPC and agentic or physical AI. The topics that NVIDIA is highlighting for Washington and anticipate them to be presented in terms of deployment rather than demonstrations. Expectations are adjusted for performance. Blackwell Ultra's spring plan is being reiterated with Ruben Vera Ruben on the horizon. It is being translated for a Washington audience that is nearly as concerned with supply, dependability, and the overall cost of inference as raw tops. October will probably be about deployment or how to get these systems into data centers with megawatt budgets and agencies with RFP checklists if March's GTC was about announcing. Investors will keep an ear out for any indications of delivery timing color, public sector demand, and short-term networking and power difficulties. Additionally, if Huang's address touches on, the week will be successful if it includes performance per watt, time to value, and a narrative about connecting millions of accelerators without destroying the substation. The conference is expected to function on the ground as a cross between a trade mission and a tech demonstration. The expo floor will change into a Beltway Science Fair by Tuesday, with exhibitors showcasing networking solutions, robotics, and quantum systems that all speak cost-benefit and compliance. The two questions that federal buyers typically ask, does it work and who else uses it, will be the focus of everything. Teams attempting to solidify a pilot into a program can use NVIDIA's Connect with the Expert Stations, which offer drop-in consultations on topics such as accelerated computing, agentic AI, CUDA tuning, vision stacks, omniverse twins, and even quantum via CUDA Q. Additionally, on-site certifications are being offered, such as the new generative AI credentials, which are scheduled to ensure that our certified team has a PowerPoint that you can present to your contracting officer. NVIDIA promotes robustness, stability, and domestic sourcing. Federal consumers are more interested in what is permitted than what is feasible. The same inference optimizations, photonics, and interconnects that impress San Jose investors will probably be presented as energy security and power management solutions. The standard Washington warnings are displayed against that pitch. Issues that are expected to come up in QAnamp. As in side room briefings, such as vendor lock in, export control exposure, and basic energy supply. After the keynote shine wears off, startups have their chance. Founders have five minutes apiece to wow investors, integrators, and the occasional colonel who happen to drop by from a JADC2 meeting during NVIDIA's inception program, which also includes a startup tent on the floor.
Edge robots, security, synthetic data, and healthcare triage are the practical demonstrations that illustrate what a government checkbook could truly purchase. These are the receipts portion of the story. NVIDIA is placing a wager that the organizations leaving the Walter E. Washington Convention Center will view artificial intelligence as a tool to be used rather than as a risk to be controlled. The goal of this iteration of GTC is to demonstrate that NVIDIA already speaks both languages and that the next wave of innovation will require just as many signatures as transistors. Who schedules follow-ups, which pilots are named, and whether any agencies indicate funding intent after the show are the short-term indicators. Even in the nation's capital, NVIDIA appears to be adamant that GTC stay a technical conference rather than a trade show. Everything about the Washington edition, however, points to a business that is learning to communicate in a different language of power. The true innovations here aren't measured in gigahertz, but rather in how well NVIDIA can articulate AI as a public utility. The main question this week is whether the business can convert its spring roadmap into language that a Washington buyer can use for procurement. If hype is born in San Jose, then it is tested in Washington. Here, NVIDIA will try to demonstrate that its devices can live alongside the bureaucracy they are designed to modernize, that artificial intelligence can operate within the rules without losing its competitive advantage. It might not immediately matter if anyone in the federal government truly believes that reasoning. Ideas often catch on in Washington long before contracts do. When the lights go down on Wednesday, the main focus will be on who NVIDIA wowed rather than what it disclosed. The business that made chips become emblems of aspiration is now attempting to make them into laws. And that may be the most potent upgrade of all in Washington. Don't forget to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Your input helps create a more knowledgeable community where we can all learn and grow together in the world of investing. Stay up to date with the latest market trends, insights, and key updates by subscribing to Investing Tutorial. We're here to help you make smarter investment decisions and stay ahead of the curve.